Welcome back to another video. We do indeed have that double upload today. So we went over medium linear, linear relationship word problems earlier. Now we're going to go be going over the advanced difficulty levels of this skill. So we're going to be dealing with these linear equations, being manipulating them, just understanding what they actually are, what the variables mean, so on and so forth. Make sure to subscribe and let's get started. The price uh, P in dollars of a train ticket used to travel a distance of M and miles is given by the equation. How many miles does the traveling distance increase if the ticket price increases by one dollar? So let's take a look here. So ticket price is increasing by one dollar and we need to see how much uh, how many miles that affects. So we have price here and we have uh, distance as our m variable so we need to understand that the ticket price is what's going to be increasing by one dollar so our p variable needs to increase by one dollar so how i would do this i would calculate m if p equals two and then calculate m if p equals three that way we get that increase of one and we get to see what happens to our m value this is a really safe way to do this Make sure to understand, ticket price increasing by $1, P is our dollar value, M is our miles. So we're going to be solving for M in both of these equations, and then we're going to be finding the difference between those two in order uh, to find our answer. So uh, let's solve these simultaneously. We subtract 1.5 from each side in both of them. So we have 0.5 equals 2 fifths M. And the, I'm just going to convert all these to a fraction. So this 1.5 is 3 halves. This is 1 half. Let me erase. All right. So now we have 3 halves equals 2 over 5m. And 1 half equals 2 over 5m. To solve both of these, we need to multiply by 5 halves on each side because that's how we get rid of a fraction. We multiply by its reciprocal. So then 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times 2 is 4, and on this side we have 5 times 1, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So we are com um, comparing 5 over 4 to 15 over 4, we just find the difference, meaning we subtract. 15 over 4 minus 5 over 4 equals 10 over 4, which then simplifies to 5 over 2. So uh, 5 over 2 is the ticket price increase by one dollar well is the mile increase when the ticket price increases by one dollar so five halves is our answer so we had to kind of reverse engineer this question uh, make sure to not to not make the mistake of thinking ticket price increasing by one dollar is the slope because then you're going to get 0 0.4 and you're going to be incorrect we need to test these different values in order to find the correct answer for this question and once again if you any have if you ever have any other questions relating to these problems make sure to let me know in the comments and i'll work through them uh, with you i'll explain it all down there on to our next question here so the monthly electric bill b in dollars for a museum using n solar panels is given by the equation what is the best interpretation of 132 in the equation so uh, currently, well, 132, we need to understand that this is an electricity bill. Can we see that our number of solar panels is subtracting from our electricity bill? So it's getting cheaper. So, and then we can kind of see, oh, if we have, um, well, it's not obviously, we're not using 132 solar panels because 132 is not that value. But then we can see if that... Uh, one of these answers is going to be correct. Let's let's try run each of these. Answer choice B: The monthly electricity bill is one hundred thirty-two dollars without solar panels. So if we had zero solar panels and n would be equal to zero, then we'd have to do eleven point five times one thirty-two, and that is definitely not one hundred thirty-two dollars. That's like a thousand something. So we can eliminate A and B already. Uh, a we can understand since it wasn't ever talked about in our question. Uh, we need some values in order to understand. All right, let's take a look here. The electricity bill is $0 when the museum uses 132 solar panels. 
So let's try this one out. If we substitute 132 for n into our question, we can see that we indeed get 0 times 11.5, which is 0. So C is a correct statement, meaning it is our best interpretation of 132. And let's just check our last answer choice here. The electricity bill decreases by $132 for each solar panel. That doesn't make sense. 132 is not our slope. So C is our correct answer here. Let's move to our next uh, question. A large truck traveling at 30 miles per hour, they underline that, so of course we're going to have to circle this, carries a letter from the central post office to a local post office. Let's underline this as well. The letter is then loaded onto a local vehicle, which travels at an average speed of 10 miles per hour until the letter reaches its destination. The large truck carried the letter for a minutes. Minutes. And the local vehicle carried the letter for B minutes. If the total distance that the letter traveled from the central post office to its destination, total is 24 miles, which of the following equations best relates A and B? So, do not fall into the trap of answer choice C, because we need to make this conversion from hours to minutes in order to find our correct answer. So, C is automatically incorrect. Now we can see that total 24, when we were dealing with these types of questions before, 20, uh, our total number was on our right side of our equation. That is how these standard form like questions are gonna go. So uh, our all answer choices do indeed match this. Now let's actually understand what values need to be with each. So 30 miles per hour, let's find how many miles per minute that is. So how do we convert hours to minutes, you may ask? Well, we use a unit conversion. So uh, it, if it takes us 60 miles for one hour, now we introduce a conversion factor. Oh, in one hour, nope, 30 miles in one hour, my bad. 30 miles in one hour, and now we have our conversion factor. One hour, oh, 60 minutes, of course. There's uh, 60 minutes in one hour. Now we can multiply this. Uh, unit conversions, we will go over this later. We cancel out all of our units because uh, if we divide hour by hour, we obviously cancel out there. We left with 30 uh, miles over 60 minutes, which is where we get this 30 over 60 value here. And of course, the local truck was also in miles per hour, which we need to convert to uh, miles per minute as well. So we end up uh, doing the same thing there, and it's just 10 miles over 60 minutes. So that's where we find those 30 over 60 and 10 over 60 values for answer choice A. Um, if you ever see something underlined in a question and you're uh, confused, probably try to figure it out, hour and minutes. Uh, usually in math, all units have to be uh, the same, or we need to find some way to relate them to each other. Yeah, make sure to keep... Uh, time values the same. If any, if everything's hours, keep everything as hours. Minutes, vice versa. Okay, so A is our correct answer here. Last question. The gas tank in Mrs. Brown's car holds a total of 15 gallons. At any given time, uh, how, how many gallons will Mrs. Brown have to pump her car to fill her tank given the fraction of the tank F already filled? So... Uh, we just need to think about this quite literally. So we have a total of 15 gallons, and then at any given time, how many gallons G will Miss Brown have to pump her car? Okay, so this uh, G value obviously has to be positive. So let's figure this out. So we're going to have a fraction given a fraction. What I like to do with these relating uh, questions, plug in some real world values. Let's say the fraction of her tank already filled is one third. Well then, how many gallons will she have to pump into her car? Well, one third of 15, uh, 10. Well, one third of 15 is five, which means she has to pump 10 gallons of car, um, 10 gallons of gas into her car. Now with these three values, we can substitute in one third for F, 10 for G, and then into each of our equations for these values, and whichever equation has this true will in actually be our answer. This is very cool. Let's start from this value uh, for D. 
So we have 10 equals 15 minus 15 over 1 third is actually 15 times 3, which is 45. Uh, 15 minus 45 is negative 30, and 10 is not equal to negative 30. D is incorrect. Now let's try C. 10 equals 15 uh, times 1 third is 5. 15 minus 5 is indeed 10. So we should keep this one in for now. Now G, we have uh, G 10 equals... 15 times 3. We already went over how to do that before, which is 45. 10 does not equal 45. And now we have, uh, does 10 equal 15 times 1 third? 15 times 1 third is 5. 10 equals 5. So, of course, 10 does not equal 5. C is our answer here. So, whenever you may be confused on the lettering of the values, well, the placing of the values, make sure to uh, use common sense. Common sense is really important in math. So, whenever you, you can see, uh, you can utilize that. All mathematical questions in the SAT will indeed follow common sense. So, uh, if you can find some true values for each of the variables and then just substitute them in, that is a fine way of solving any of these questions. Let's just double check here that it makes sense. So, this is our full tank. And then we just subtract the fraction of that tank. And that is, um, well, when, once we subtract the fraction full, that is indeed uh, how much gallons we need to fill up the car. If we just have this fraction, that is how many that is left, how many gallons left in the tank. Not how many gallons will she have to pump into her car. That's, how, that's why we need to introduce that 15 minus uh, 15F value in order to be correct here. So C is indeed the correct answer. And that will be all for today. I'm glad I could get this double upload for you guys. Advanced skills, well, they are my favorite uh, indeed because they are the most difficult. But I hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions, make sure to put them in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and have a fantastic day. Uh, tomorrow, we will be going over two skills. I'll try to do double uploads each day now. So foundations, medium, uh, and then advanced, beginner, and then so on, so forth. So that way we can continue to go through this course. All right. Have a good one, y'all. Goodbye.